Welcome to Race Face TV and this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. Let's start out with Sam Mayer, who was at Charlotte Motor Speedway last night in the Bojangles Summer Shootout. Sam took his number 22 Farbo Motorsports Legend car to Victory Lane for the third time this year and remains the points leaders with only three races remaining. But that wasn't all for Sam. On Saturday night, he was at King Sport Speedway for round eight of the Cars Tour in his number nine junior motorsports late model, where he was joined by some of the top late model drivers in the country, including Lee Pullman and teammate Josh Berry. Sam started off by qualifying fifth and then ran in the top 10 all night and eventually brought home a fourth place finish. Up next, NASCAR k and Pro Series East debut at New Hampshire Motor Speedway on Saturday night, driving for Jefferson Pitts Racing in the number 27 Ford with Titan tire and wheel on the car. Driver Jesse Love was at Stockton 99 Speedway on the pavement in his number five BCRA midget on Saturday night. The team made some drastic changes for this race to the car setup and were fast right out of the box. Jesse qualified second, only two one hundredths of a second off the pole. Won his heat race and finished third in the A main. Jesse also took over the points lead for the BCRA midgets. Up next for Jesse, Hunt Magneto wingless sprint cars at Placerville Speedway on this Saturday night. How does race face driver Adam Limke follow up Six wins in a row on the pavement in the USAC Western Midget Series. Win in the dirt at Kern County Raceway by leading every lap on Friday night. And he takes over the points lead in the dirt championship battle. Adam also leads in the pavement and the overall standings. I smell a triple crown coming this year. Up next for Adam, RPM Mortgage Late Models at Madera Speedway on July 28th. Adam was our featured driver on Race Face Spotlight this week, and in case you missed that show, you can see Adam's interview on raceface.tv on demand. Race Face driver Ryan Vargas was at Thompson Speedway in the NASCAR k and Pro Series East King Cadillac GMC Throwback 100 on Saturday in his number two Toyota sporting a Tommy Ellis throwback paint scheme. Ryan qualified 13th, and struggled with the car most of the day, but was able to finish with another top 10. Ryan said after the race, not at all the weekend that we had hoped for here in Thompson. Can't help but be a little disappointed, but we'll keep on working at it. We were still able to hold on to fifth in the points and we'll move on to the next weekend at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, where I will run on my first one mile track. Anthony Alfredo was also at Thompson Speedway in his number 40 silver bullet throwback paint scheme. Now that is one cool paint job. There's a little story behind this paint scheme. When Sterling Marlin ran the silver bullet in the Cup Series, that car was built in the same shop that now is the home of MDM Motorsports that feels the number 40 car for Anthony. The car unloaded and it not only looked cool, but it was fast. They qualified fourth and ran as high as third in the race before the handling went away late and they ended up in sixth place. Anthony is fourth in points heading into New Hampshire Motor Speedway this weekend. Let's now talk a little ARCA racing where we find Sheldon Creed at Elko Speedway in the Sioux Chief Power Pex 250. Sheldon, who is one of the hottest drivers in all of racing, with 11 top four finishes, including three wins in only 12 starts. The number 28 United Reynolds Toyota qualified six and had an up and down day before they lost a rear end gear on lap 194, ending his day in 15th position. Sheldon holds on to a 185 points lead over his teammate Zane Smith heading to Berlin Raceway this weekend. Let's now check in with our race face next drivers. The Red Army was at the Eastern Grands in Greenville, Illinois, where Justice Sokol brought home a third place finish in both heavy Honda and heavy World Formula 
and fourth place finishes in Heavy Animal and Heavy 160. Brother Colby Sokol won the championship in Senior Honda, finished third in Light 160 and third in Senior Animal. These young racers have been out on the road for the last three weeks, competing at the Mini Indy, Battle at the Brickyard, and the Eastern Grands. Now that's dedication, and my hat goes off to the parents. That's a lot of miles when you start out in Colorado. Next driver, Bryce Bizanson, had a double header that started with his micro sprint at Dimming Speedway, where they had a field of over 26 cars. Bryce qualified fifth, finished third in his heat, and then brought home a 10th place finish in the A-Main. Now let's move to Saturday night at South Sound Speedway and the Legend car where he finished third in his heat and eighth in the main. The team struggled with speed but felt confident that they will get it figured out by this weekend. The team will compete in the Clay Cup Nationals at Dimming Speedway in a three-day event starting on the 19th. Now, race face driver Joe Delento was off last weekend, but that did not keep him away from the track as he went to Elko Speedway to cheer on Sheldon Creed and also got the chance to meet driver development expert Lauren Rainier. Well, that's it for this weekend's driver updates. As you can see, there's a lot of racing going on, and that's not going to change this week. If you've not had a chance to check out raceface.tv, make sure to do so. You can catch up with any shows that you might have missed. You can also follow Dale Jr. Download, Dirty Mo Radio, and keep up with the latest news from your favorite racing series. As always, I encourage you to support local racing in your community. We'll see you back here next week.